Welcome back to the NPTEL course on game theory. So, in the previous sessions we have seen combinatorial games. Now, we will see the classical game theory which is developed by von Neumann. So, in this subject uh, the game theory is uh, what exactly is game theory? We have already seen in the combinatorial games that there are two players who make decisions alternatively. In this classical game theory which is sometimes also called economic games, in this the two players instead of choosing their actions alternatively they choose simultaneously. Of course, in this classical game theory the games where the players choose their decisions or actions alternatively they are known as extensive form games. We will come back to that at a later stage. As I said in this games the players make decisions alternatively. So, to start with we will consider the following example which is known as uh, matching pennies. There are two players and both the players have two strategies. H and T. Now, if both the players choose same strategy then player 1 gets a unit of money from player 2. If they differ then player 1 has to pay to player 2. So, let me write it as a pict the pictorial representation. So, there is a player 1 here and player 2 and player 1 has a 2 choices h and t and player 2 also has 2 choices h and t. So, as I said if the both the choices are same the player 1 gets a unit and player 2 has to pay to player 1. So, that is the meaning of this 1 minus 1. Similarly, if the when both players choose T and T it is the same thing player 1 gets 1 unit player 2 has to pay 1 unit to player 1. And if their choices are different like player 1 chooses T and player 2 chooses H player 1 has to pay to player 2 therefore, his utility will be minus 1 and player 2 is getting the money 1 unit. So, he 1 here. Similarly, if player 1 chooses H and player 2 chooses T it is the same thing player 1 has to pay 1 unit to player 2. So, this is is a, a simple example of a 2 player 0 sum game. So, let me introduce the terminology. The 2 players is mainly because there are only 2 players here. Why is this 0 sum? Now, look at it player 1 if player 1 receives 1 unit then player 2 is paying that much to player 1. So, the sum of these 2 is always 0. You look at it. So, this sum is 0, this sum is also 0, this sum is also 0, this is also 0. So, therefore, this is known as 0 sum game. So, in fact, the way this game is played by children is the following thing. They have 2 coins separately individually and both of them toss the coin and if the outcomes match then player 1 gets 1 unit from player 2 and if the outcomes do not match the player uh, 2 gets 1 unit from player 1. So, this is the matching pennies example. 
So, now let us go to the next game which is known as a rock paper scissors. Again it is a two player game. And there are three strategies now, three choices. So, the choices are rock, paper, scissors and once again we draw a pictorial representation. So, the player 1, player 2, player 2 has three choices R, P, S, player 1 also has three choices R, P, S. Okay. So, the rules are the following thing. So, the interpretation of this game helps. Rock can be covered by paper, paper can be cut by scissors, scissors can be broken by rock. So, that is the intuition behind this game. What is mean is that if a player 1 chooses rock, player 2 chooses paper because player 2 can hide this rock. So, therefore, player 2 gets 1 unit from player 1. Okay. So, let me start when player 1 chooses rock, player 2 chooses paper. So, player 2 gets 1 unit and player 1 gets minus 1. Similarly, if player 1 chooses rock, player 2 chooses scissors, the scissors can be broken by rock. So, therefore, player 1 gets 1 unit and player 2 has to pay 1 unit to player 1. Similarly, like paper and razors rock, if player 1 chooses paper and player 2 chooses rock, then player 1 gets 1 unit and player 2 has to pay that 1 unit to player 1. Paper and scissors, so scissors can be used to cut the paper. So, minus 1 and 1 here. When scissors and rock already discussed about this, so minus 1 and 1 and when player 1 chooses scissors, player 2 chooses paper, then it will be 1 minus 1. Now, what remains here is the diagonal entries where both players choose the same thing. In which case, we assume that both of them are getting nothing. So, if we really look at it, this game is once again a 0 sum game and 2 player game. So, now let us look at another game. So, this is known as a coordination game there are again two players. So, actually the story helps in understanding this game. So, there are two friends let us assume there are several ways to tell this and one friend likes going to movies the other friend likes to go to watch sports. So, therefore, there are two choices for them. So, for the sake of simplicity I will only choice 1, choice 2 only I will put. So, once again draw the pictures. the choice 1, choice 2. So, let us say C 1 is basically movie, C 2 is sports. So, player 1 let us say he prefers 
movie and player 2 prefers sports. If player 1 goes to a movie and player 2 goes to sports that means they are not going together to a place so that in which case they will not get any utility. So, here it will be 0 0 and similarly in this place also it is 0 0. Now let us look at the this entry. Here in this entry both the players are choosing to go to movies. We know that the player 1 prefers movie whereas player 2 prefers sports. So, player 1 is getting maximum benefit but at the same time player 2 is also with player 1. So, therefore, he also gets some, same, some utility may not be the greatest. So, player 1 gets 4 and player 2 gets 2. Now, if both of them decide to go to C2 that means that is the player 2's best choice. So, in which case player 2 gets the maximum benefit and player 1 also gets some benefit. So, it will be 2, 4. So, now you look at it the sum of these entries is not equal to 0. Of course, this sum of these two are 0. So, this is known as non-zero sum game. Okay. So, once we see these games we can, there are several examples which we will discuss throughout this course. Uh, now, let us understand this games more formally. So, how do we define a, a formally? There are two players and player 1 has a choice set, he has some set of choices. Let me write it as x and player 2 also has some set of choices. Let me call this as y. Now, player 1 has utility. Let me denote it by pi 1 which will be a function from x cross y to r. And similarly, player 2 has a utility pi 2 which is a function again from x cross y to r. So, this is the question here is what are their optimal choices. So, this is the basic question that game theory tries to understand and of course, this is a basic and also the first question. So, here we need to understand several terms. The most important thing here is optimal. What do you mean by optimal? What is an optimal choice? Okay, before going into this, this uh, discussion about optimal, let us understand the previous examples what is this x and y. So, let us go back to previous examples. So, here in this example x is same as y which is same as ht. Then pi 1 h h is 1 which is same as pi 1 t t. Similarly, pi 2 is nothing pi 2 of okay, sorry pi 1 of h comma t is minus 1 which is same as pi 1 of t comma h and pi 2 is nothing but minus of pi 1. So, this is exactly in the same way as we introduced. Now, let us look at the next example 
here there are 3 choices this is basically x which is also same as y and pi 1 r r is 0 pi 2 r r is 0. So, we can write it pi 1 r r is 0 which is same as pi 1 s s which is same as pi 1 t t. Then pi 1 r s is 1 which is also same as pi 1 p r which is also same as pi 1 s p like likewise we can write down the other things. So, now if you go back to uh, and of course in this example once again pi 2 is same as minus pi 1. In the next example there are two choices x is equals to y is equals to c1 c2 and pi 1 c1 c1 is 4 pi 1 c2 c2 is 2 and pi 1 c1 c2 pi 1 c2 c1 is 0. Similarly, we can write pi 2 and here as I said pi 2 is certainly not equals to minus pi 1 that is the reason in other words pi 1 plus pi 2 is not equals to 0 this is the reason why it is called non-zero sum k. So, now coming back to the definition as I said there are two players the player 1 has a set of choices x, player 2 has a set of choices y, player 1's utility is given by this function and player 2's utility is given by this function. And because I am saying utility therefore each player's object is to maximize their utility. So, all both the players have to make maximize their utility. How do they do it? So, we need to understand how they will do it. So, first we need to understand they are different from optimization problems. In an optimization problem there is a decision maker there will be a single player typically is called as a decision maker he has some set of choices available and he has to choose the best choice among them. And accordingly there is a utility function if it is a maximization problem it you will have an utility if it is a minimization problem there is a cost. So, so far we are writing everything in as a utility maximization problems we can also write it as a minimization. So, that is a standard way we can look at the minimization. Now look at this interesting thing here the player 1 he cannot just simply optimize over his choices the reason is his utility depends on the choices made by the second player. In the same way the first second player cannot simply maximize over his choices because his pay of utility function depends on the first player's choices. So, the game theory is basically deals with such situations where there are multiple people and each person has their own utility and their utility depends not only on their choice, but on the choices of other players. So, here even though we have mentioned about a two player we can actually extend this notation to multiple players. So, let us look at that. So, there are n players and the players i's choice set 
let me call it as a xi and player i's payoff is given by pi i which is a function of x1 cross x2 cross xn to r. So, of course, i becomes 1 to n any of this thing. So, now here if you look at it there are n players and each player has their own set of choices and their own payoff functions and each player's object to maximize pi i. Now, as I said the player's objective depends on the choices of others. So, how do they maximize? So, it requires to introduce the notion of equilibrium. So, the games what exactly it means is we need to introduce this notion of equilibrium and what is this equilibrium. So, that forms the basic question what is equilibrium. So, before going further let us understand few things. So, the few points which I have not said earlier let us look at it. So, how are they making? decisions. If you recall in a combinatorial games for example, tic tac toe how this decision making process is there. So, player 1 first makes his decision after observing player 1's decision player 2 makes his decision and it goes on alternatively and here it is completely different. Look at uh, recall this uh, matching pennies. So, there are uh, two players there are two choices. Now, if player 1 makes let us say H then if player 2 somehow knows that player 1 has made H then player 2 will certainly choose this T and then there is no game here it is very simple. So, this is not what we want here in this in these games players do not know what others have done. This is important. In other word what it means is that players make their decisions independently. That means player 1 makes his decision and player 2 simultaneously he makes his decision without knowing what the other player is making. So, this is the very important this thing. So, this they make their decisions decisions simultaneously. So, they make their decisions simultaneously and they do not know what the other person have done and they will not let their decision known to others. So, this example itself will tell you. So, if player 1 
lets his decision known to player 2 before he makes his decision then player 1 is losing it and he does not want to do that. So, what that means is rationality. What means players are selfish. What it means that every player wants to make the best, no player would like to lose. So, if whatever decision a player makes, he makes in such a way that his utility is maximized irrespective of what the other player is doing it. So, the selfishness are in the language of economics it is called rationality. So, this is a very important concept. Then there is another thing which is known as intelligent. The players are intelligent enough to understand what decision they should make. They are and most importantly we assume that both players are equally intelligent and rational. That means whatever player 1 can think about this game, player 2 can also think about this same way and they also know that the player 1 is let us say player 1 knows that player 2 is rational and intelligent and player 2 also knows that player 1 is rational and intelligent and not only that one player 1 knows that player 2 knows that player 1 is rational like this you can think about an information aspects and we assume that all these informations are known to them. Okay. Everyone knows that the other player other players are equally intelligent, rational and everything. So, this is a very very important aspect here. Now, once this independent this in intelligent and rationality is there and in the previous thing we said they are making their decisions simultaneously independent of the other players. So, now that the basic setup of this games are defined. Now, we still need to introduce this notion of equilibrium. So, what is the equilibrium notion? So, let us look at the following thing. Now, let us say player 1 somehow player 1 knows that player 2 is playing let us say y in y. We are looking at the 2 player game and let us assume that somehow player 1 knows that player 2 is playing y in x. What will player 1 do? It is because we have assumed that he is intelligent, he will choose x which maximizes his utility his utility is given by pi 1 x comma y over x in x. So, for a fixed y if I know the player 2 has fixed y then player 1 will choose x which maximizes this quantity. That means he solves max x in x pi 1 x comma y and whatever maximizes this quantity that he will choose. Okay. Let us look at the similar thing. Suppose player 2 knows that player 1 is 
playing x. Then like previous player 2 solves max over y in y of pi 2 x comma y. Whatever y maximizes this quantity player 2 is going to play that one. So, this gives the following notion this introduces the following notion so a, a pair x star y star a pair of player 1's choice here and player 2's choice y star such that given that given y star x star maximizes pi 1 x y star. Similarly, given x star y star maximizes pi 2 x star y. So, when player 1 player 2 fixes his strategy y star player 1 choice x star should maximize this and similarly if, if player 1 strategy is fixed here then player 2 strategy y star should maximize this quantity. So, this is basically the equilibrium notion in fact this is known as Nash equilibrium. So, we will discuss more about this equilibrium concept and several examples in the next session.